Γεια σα. Καλησπέρα σα. Σα ευχαριστούμε πολύ για την παρουσία σα σε αυτή την ιδιαίτερα εκδηλώση. Χαιρόμαστε που καλωσορίζουμε την Ανθέα Σιλμπέρ στο Ολυμπιόν, στο Φεστιβάλ Κινηματογράφου τη Θεσσαλονίκη, για αυτή την ειδική προβολή τη ταινία Rosemary's Babies του Ρόμαν Πολόνσκι, που προγραμματί... Συγγνώμη. <laughs> Προγραμματοποιείται στο πλαίσιο τη τεσαν... ταινιοθήκη. Um, Αν υπόρο. Συγγνώμη, είμαι... είναι η. The, the, the emotions. <laughs> Αν υπονομου... υπομονούμε να ακούσαμε. Όσα έχει να μας πει η Ανθέα Σιλμπέρ, κοστιμ designer της ταινίας που θα δούμε, και υποψήφια για Όσκαρ για το Chinatown και το Τζούλια. Για την εκδήλωση αυτή συνεργαζόμαστε με τους Dark Candy, τη Βαλεντίνα Δε Τζόρτζη και τον Σακή Λαλά, τους οποίους ευχαριστώ. Ευχαριστώ επίσης για την υποστήριξη και τη Βελμάρ και τώρα δίνω τον λόγο στην Βαλεντίνα Δε Γιώργη και στον Σακιλάλα. Καλησπέρα, εγώ είμαι η Βαλεντίνα Δε Γιώργη, είμαι the half of the dark candy, ας πούμε, εγώ είμαι το candy. Ο κύριος είναι το dark. Αυτή που είδατε ήταν μία μικρή εκδρομή μέσα σε ένα πανέμορφο μαγικό κόσμο που εμείς ανακαλύψαμε εντελώς τυχαία, αλλά μας έχει πιάσει τόσο πολύ που αποφασίσαμε από δύο χρόνια να το κάνουμε και το δικό μας κόσμο, και τη δική μας δουλειά και τη δική μας ζωή. Αυτός ο κόσμος, ο μαγικός, είναι ο κόσμος των costume designers, ο οποίος μέσα σε αυτό το κόσμο, συγγνώμη για τα ελληνικά μου, έχει αυτά τα τρελά πρόσωπα που είναι οι costume designers. Οι costume designers πολλές φορές είναι λίγο misunderstood. Δηλαδή, πολλές φορές ο κόσμος νομίζει ότι ο costume designer τι κάνει. Παίρνει τα ρούχα και τα βάζει πάνω σε έναν ηθοποιό. Λάθος, μεγάλο λάθος. Ή πολλές φορές ο κόσμος πιστεύει ότι ο costume designer είναι ένα stylist δανεισμένος στο σινεμά, λάθος, 
trello lathos. Xere te tine o costume designer, o costume designer in a storyteller. O costume designer in aftos, punimi urgita prosopa, ta opia esis, tha gapisete, i tha misisete, e anine kaka prosopa. Anche mallon, sa ftiti tenia, boristi in archi, na gapisume ke olas, ta kaka prosopa. Afto in e omos kati toso peculiar. Ti afto tha milisume metà. Ara tine i costume designers, i costume designers in e afti, punimi urgun onira. E ne para poli discolo tora se dio logia na milisume che na sa scano na catalave tetine i costume designers. E do e come mia leggenda i costume designer pu tha mas pi acrivos tine o costume designer. Alla afto pu prospathume mis sto micro mas na canume e ne na canume to cosmo na gnorisi dos costume designers o costume design me ta gegonota me tis provoles me educational me oti dipote afto offline alla to canume ke online me afto po echete di afto ene mi ado cu series po legete mi de Hollywood costume designers ya to pia tha mas milisi omos o director Gia sas, ευχαριστume po irthate Εγώ είμαι ο σκηνοθέτης και παραγωγός του Meet the Hollywood Costume Designers. Έχουμε κάνει με τη Βαλεντίνα ένα site, www.thedarkend.com, εκεί μπορείτε να δείτε τα επεισόδια. Μέχρι τώρα έχουμε γυρίσει 22, online είναι 11. Έχουμε πάει πολλές φορές Los Angeles, από δύο χρόνια πηγαίνουμε, ερχόμαστε, πηγαίνουμε, ερχόμαστε. Και έχουμε συναντήσει τους μεγαλύτερους, από, από τον Costume Designer που έκανε το The Blues Brothers, τον Diana Jones, τον, τον Pretty Woman. Φυσικά την κυρία Ανθέα Σίλμπερτ, Την αναζητήσαμε απεγνωσμένα στο Λος Άντζελες για δύο χρόνια. Δεν μπορούσαμε να τη βρούμε. Κανένας δεν ήξερε πού ήταν. Άρα δεν ήταν μια δουλειά σκηνοθέτη παραγωγού να τη βρούμε. Περισσότερο detective. Άρα την βρήκαμε στη Σκιάθο, την κυρία Σίλμπερτ. Και μας, ε, είχαμε την τιμή να τη συναντήσουμε πέρσι και να γυρίσουμε άλλο ένα επεισόδιο το, του Meet the Holy Costume Designers και να, και να μας μιλήσει για όλα τα παρασκήνια και για τη δουλειά της γενικότερα. Γι' αυτό και εγώ θα περάσω το λόγο τώρα στην κυρία Σίλμπερτ να μας πει δύο λογάκια πριν να δούμε την ταινία. Ευχαριστούμε, ευχαριστούμε. Θα μιλήσω, νομίζω, στα αγγλικά, γιατί είμαι... Τα πρώτα έξι χρόνια μόνο μίλαγα ελληνικά. Και έπειτα πήγα στο σχολείο, έμαθα αγγλικά και δεν ήθελα να μιλήσω καθόλου. Ώσπου να πάω στο σχοιάδο. Τότε τα θυμήθηκα όλα. Αλλά για τις ταινίες δεν ξέρω αν μπορώ να μιλήσω, γιατί μιλάω σαν μία, γυναίκα, μία κοπέλα που είναι έξι. What? You go this way? Oh. Δεν ξέρω για μπάκροφόλ σε εγώ. Εγώ είμαι από πίσω. Που, που εκεί πρέπει το custom designer να είναι. Όχι εδώ, από πίσω. Ποτέ δεν λες, α, εδώ είμαι, εδώ είμαι. Είσαι σερβιτόρος. You're serving the script, the story, and the character. And it's not about you. You're a servant. In Rosemary's Baby, there were two decisions that Roman made that gave the look to a lot of the movie. The first one was that he wanted it to be in 1965, because that's when Pope Paul VI went to New York. And he thought it was important that the devil's child should be born when the Pope is present. The other one was that you never suspect people that are loud and garish, so that if they frighten you, you will get more frightened. You are already scared when you see somebody who's like that and dark, wearing dark clothes. And so you're already, you're, you're ready to be scared, but when you're not ready to be scared, you get more scared. So that the neighbors are all in loud clothes. Ruth Gordon's clothes are like, if you saw that woman on the street, you would laugh. Anyway. Ah. Ah. Να προσπαθήσω να τα πω, δεν νομίζω. Μπορώ. 
Ποιο ξέρει. Το άλλο ήταν ότι ο Ρόμεν είπε, μήπω θέλω να φωτογραφίσω τη κοιλιά τη, ότι είναι έγκυο. Αλλά στο Hollywood είχαν μπαμπάκι. Μπαμπάκι, μπαμπάκι, δεν μπορεί να το φωτογραφίσει. Έπρεπε να, να σχεδιάσω. Σκόλ, πώ το λένε, σκόλ. Δεν ξέρω. Να το εναγλύψω. Έκανα ένα για έξι μήνε, εννιά μήνε ψηλό και εννιά μήνε χαμηλά. Ότι είσαι έτοιμη. Και έπειτα το, το κάναμε. Ήταν το χρώμα τη Μία Φάρο. Αλλά ποτέ δεν το έκανε. Αλλά ήταν εκεί. Και το αυτό το ήξερε και αυτό ήθελε. Τι άλλο. Ο διάβολο πάντα έκανα πολύ research. Δεν ξέρω πώ θα πω research. Πάντα είναι reptile. Είναι φίδι. Σαν φίδι. Όπου κοιτάξει, πίσω πίσω στα Middle Ages, στα manuscripts, πάντα είναι φίδι. Oh, it's working? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, his costume, when he's the devil, John's, is all little scales. There was, it must have been a thousand. The people had to, who sold them, I think, wanted to kill me. <laughs> Because his whole body, from top to bottom, were these. No one was bigger than that. Anyway. I don't know what else to say about it, the movie itself, but you can ask me questions. Of course, of course. You said before that costume design, costume designer, it's servant. It's okay. I can, I can accept this in terms of egos. But it's not that, because the costume designer helps the actor to go into the character. To, to be the character. But you, you don't understand what I'm saying. I'm saying I see a lot of movies now where I see the customers that are waving their hand at me, look at me, look at me, what I design. Go be a, go be a fashion designer, don't be a costume designer. You're supposed to be serving the story and the actor. Finished. It's not about you. Yes. Do you want to explain what a costume designer really do? Well, it, what I used to do is I would try to figure out who does that person remind me of in my own life. And I would try to give each character someone that I knew, and I knew what kind of choices they made. Or I would try find somebody in history that reminded me of that person. And I never ever used a fashion magazine to do research. Because do you know anybody who looks like the pages of a fashion magazine? No. And if you do, you should get rid of them. <laughs> so I only used personal photographs, friends' photographs, newspapers, And news magazines, sometimes paintings if it was far enough back, but never ever fashion magazines. Ochi. <laughs> Returning again to the uh, work, the big work that the costume designers do for uh, to help the character, to to the Hector to become character, to become character. What somebody told to you? Somebody very, very, very no, He didn't famous. tell it to me. He <laughs> told, told it to a producer. Because I was going to do some special costumes for a movie. I even forget what movie it was. But I was going to do Jean Moreau, one other actress, and Jack Nicholson was in the movie. And he went to the, the producer and said, wait a minute, the ant. He used to call me the ant, not Anthea. Is going to do any clothes. I want her to do mine too. 
because if she does your costumes, you don't have to act as much. This makes a costume designer a legendary costume designer. Ah. Ah. <laughs> also age. <laughs> no. No, it's not Anthea, we heard about some secret tips on your costumes that only you and the actors know. What's that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's something that the initials or uh, some keys or coins inside the pockets. Oh. Can you explain it? I a mean, bit? I, I didn't just do the clothes. I would put keys in the pockets and things like that. If you were rich, I gave you many keys. If you were poor, I gave you only one. And when I was doing A New Leaf, uh, Walter Matthau was playing this white Anglo-Saxon Protestant who had lost his money, and he was gonna marry Elaine May for hers. And I knew somebody who, and I used his father as the guide. And I even went to his shirt maker, to his tailor, and, and he used to always have his initials on the inside, not here. So when he came, Walter, to the fitting room, he put it on, and he said, and he said he said, what is this? And he started to tear $5 bills and throwing them. You're wasting money on putting my initials on the inside. I said, Walter, you need all the help you can get. You're this Jew from Brooklyn, and you're playing this what? So just put it on and forget it. <laughs> you were not supposed to be a costume designer, but an archaeologist. <laughs> well, I was trained. I, I was trained in art history. I went to Barnard, and then I was going to go to Columbia to continue. And my father wanted me, me to be an archaeologist. And that summer, I was hired by somebody to do research. And one day, and then he said, do you want to stay to make sure that everything's accurate? And I said, OK, OK. I never say no. Because if the yes you say, that you say, things you say yes to change your life, things you say no to have no, we go nowhere. So anyway, I stayed there, and one day I thought, maybe this is more interesting than 12th century manuscripts. And I called my father, and I said, Pateruli? Then he knew right away I wanted something. And I said, I think you can get your money back from Colombia but I've decided I'm going to be a costume designer. And he said, I thought that's what women do. <laughs> and I said, no, some men do it too. But anyway, that's how it started. And we have to say, can stop at Aruli. Denia. <laughs> Uh, the first question is about Rosemary's character, which is so strong, emotionally strong. How did you approach the, this, this character? Well, to begin with, I thought, oh, well, I know about 1965. I lived there. But then when I started to really look at all photographs and things, I realized you don't remember exactly the way it was. And because Roman had decided it was going to be 65, that was the year that women were shortening their dresses a half inch at a time. Every, every week, every two weeks, you shorted it another half inch and another half inch, until by the end of the movie, you're wearing miniskirts. Also, I wanted her to look as vulnerable as possible. So all of her clothes really are clothes that would, could be worn by a, a, a young girl, a child almost, just made for a larger person. 
And let's talk about the evils. They are so colorful, but they are so scary. How did you do it? Well, that was, that was Roman saying, you're not afraid of loud people. But once you've realized that they are evil, that the fright is even more so, because you're not expecting it. They look too silly to be evil, but there you are. They are really evil, because really you don't expect it. You, your philosophy of design is not to take inspiration from fashion, but are you aware that Rosemary Baby has the costumes had a big, big, heavy influence on fashion? I, wa I actually was not aware of that, but it's true. Never look at a fashion magazine. And I guess I also don't look at what, the mo once the movie's over, it's over, I'm on the next one. So I don't know what's happening. But I would have, I, that would be strange because we had done that already. Why do it again? Yes, right. Uh, another question could be, if it was difficult to dress Casavetes, because, because I saw a documentary about this, uh, and uh, you well, had some problems on set, or? I, I only remember once, and I said no, and that was finished, the problem. But I hate to say this to you guys, but Greek men, <laughs> unless you stop them right away, they can keep going. And you stop him immediately? Yes, in the, in I just, the first days of uh, shooting? Or? I said, John, please, put the sweater on and leave me alone. <laughs> okay, very good. Okay. And uh, another thing, you lived in a very exciting moment of uh, the history of cinema. It's the, the start of the new era, no? the new Hollywood era. With Polanski, that you know. Uh, oh, well, I, I, it was like a charmed time, and I had a very charmed career, because imagine your first movie in Hollywood being Rosemary's Baby. After that, it's not so hard. Then, after then, they call you. You don't have to call anybody. You was more free, uh, like a costume designer, also in that era, to ex express yourself with the costumes or. You don't express yourself. You no, excuse me for the, for the characters, you, yes. You have to just do the character. Yeah. You stay out of it. OK. Just one last question, and then I leave it to you. How challenging is to work, was to work, with uh, Roman Polanski? Well, Roman Polanski and I hit it off right away. And the only time he and I have had an argument was on Chinatown. I didn't want Faye Dunaway to wear red, dark red nail polish because I didn't think that women in her social strata did that. And he said to me, are you getting dumb like the others? I said, what? He said, everybody knows movies through, th knows this period through the movies. And all the actresses wore dark red lipstick. I mean, Tell me, are you getting dumb like the others? Years later, somebody told me he thought I was the smartest woman he ever met. But when I dis disagreed with him, I got dumb like the others. And he won, she wore dark red nail polish. Great. We are done with the questions because now I'm going to say it in Greek. Έχετε μια μοναδική ευκαιρία σήμερα να μιλήσετε και να μάθετε κάτι από την Άνθια Σίλβερ. Άρα, αν έχετε ερωτήσεις, Γεια σας. Ήθελα να ρωτήσω για αυτή τη συγκεκριμένη ταινία. Η συνεργασία με το Πολάσκι πώς έγινε ακριβώς. Έδωσε κάποιες κατευθυντήρες γραμμές και μετά συζητούσαν ρόλο-ρόλο. Παρουσίαζε κάποιες προτάσεις. Πώς γινότανε. Together, sometimes one way, sometimes the other. But he always, I always want the director to speak first. And the script is who's talking more than anybody. 
but the, always the director and his vision comes first. Then you enter the conversation. Is that the, is that, was that the question? Alirotisi? Hello, I would like to ask you something about Chinatown yes. because the time of Chinatown is not uh, um, your own time so apparently you couldn't find relatives or acquaintances. There was, there was my mother. She <laughs> Faye Dunaway was dressed a lot like my mother. Uh, what and about I, there the There were all those photographs. Uh, Jack, my idea of Jack's character was that he was somebody who admired and loved actors and that he would try to imitate them. So I looked at old newspapers about when actors were at an event. And I dressed him like that. And what about the rest of the male characters? I mean, every, everybody in the movie, I found a, a person from that time that I could use as inspiration. And was the material printed like you resorted to newspapers or stuff, or like were they uh, acquaintances? Oh, oh, you know, going to libraries and looking at old newspapers, uh, old photographs, uh, news magazines. And there, there's plenty of resources that you can look up. And apparently you had to do some translation because from that time the material must have been black and white. No, but when you read they tell you what colors things are. Okay. Also, one of the things about Chinatown is because it's a drought, there's no blue anywhere in the movie. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, I would like to ask you, uh, perhaps, um, uh, in, in your opinion, what is the most uh, challenging aspect of being a costume designer? And perhaps, wh what was the most um, challenging moment in your career? Thank you. Well, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to say. I mean, each, each movie, has its own challenge, and it's your job to see it through. Some of them were more pleasant than others, and there were certain people that I loved working with, and certain people that, by, by, when I did Fist, it was the movie that made me think, I never want to do this again. <laughs> but. You go, with, you go with the flow, and I was lucky enough, shortly afterwards, I got a call from Warner Brothers, come be a vice president. So there. Thank you. Uh, after the career you had in uh, costume designing, uh, what was the reason you entered the productive industry? The executive production, I mean. Well, I, like I just said, I, the people I loved working with didn't work enough, and I couldn't stay busy. And when I was working with the other people, I sometimes would get a little cranky, and I realized being cranky is not good, and I was ready. But I think there was a movie that was never finished, that I was doing with Mike Nichols. And it was, The Goodbye Girl was the prequel to the movie that we were doing. 
and Bobby De Niro was cast. It was a Neil Simon play, it was script. And Bobby De Niro was playing uh, an actor who had been discovered. And he had a wife and two children. And now they, whenever they would go to a restaurant, they would be interrupted and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, all the time that we were working on the pre-production, Mike kept saying to Neil Simon, you know, getting there is more interesting. But anyway, we started shooting. Bobby De Niro is a wonderful actor, even sometimes a good comedian. But he's a certain kind of comedian. He's not a Neil Simon comedian, which is blah, 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 bah. Blah, 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 bah. And there are two little children waiting to hear their, their cue line. So it really wasn't being very funny. And so he, Mike Nichols fired Bobby De Niro. And he was planning on recasting. And, but we were, look, we, the editors put together all the film we had so far. And we were look, all looked at it, who were working on it. And then we all went our separate ways. Mike went to his office. I was walking down the hall, he had the door open. And he said, Come in. And he said, what did you think? I went, he said, you're right, it's a shrug. But we've already spent three and a half million dollars. I said, what? Think about the three million you haven't spent. And so with that, he said, you're right. And he picked up the phone and called the head of Warner Brothers, John Kelly. He said, I'm here with the aunt. She thinks the movie's a shrug and we should cancel. He must have said exactly what Mike said, but you've already spent three and a half million dollars. And she says, the aunt says, what a, think of the three million we haven't spent yet. And I think that made, right into that man's head. And he thought, well, they deal with her, not just as a costume designer, but in other ways as well. And that's why he offered me a job to come and be a vice president at Water Brothers. And as I, my philosophy is, is the things you say yes to change your life, the things you, you say no to lead nowhere. But um, Warren Beatty didn't talk to you. What? But Warren Beatty didn't talk to you for six months. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, Warren Beatty thought I was a traitor. He didn't speak to me for six months after that. He finally forgave me. <laughs> Hello, DC. I think uh, one more question. Uh, which was your favorite collaboration? Uh, the most pleasant? Thank you. Well, I don't think I have a most pleasant. I have about like five or six. Every time I worked with Roman Polanski or Mike Nichols or Elaine May, or Warren, it was great. When I was working for the other people, it was just okay. And with some people, it was awful. We are here to see. No, erhete, erhete to microfono. Hello. I would like to ask you, how do you feel um, watching the movie after so many years, after its initial release? I believe that it still much, it has a powerful message because uh, mentions subjects like the alienation that unfortunately exists um, still today. I don't I didn't understand the question. Me too. Oh, first of all, how do you feel uh, watching the movie in, after oh, so it, many years. So, oh, I, I actually, there were all sorts of parts of the movie I didn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I saw it just like an audience. Okay, it's uh, a good question with your question. Because uh, it's true, you don't remember. 
So you Especially watch you it with age. a different point of view or? Did you enjoy the film? Oh yes, I did. <laughs> and, um, I even thought that the costume designer did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> And do you think that considers uh, now, um, our current era or it just uh, depicts more the decade of 60s? Well, the, the difference of today's scary movies is there's a lot of blood and a lot of people jumping out at pla uh, from places and a lot of people with guns and all of that. This was, nothing happened and you were scared. I think that's more of an art. Okay, thank you very much. Another question and then uh, we stop, okay? Hello, uh, I want to ask you, how did you think the transformation of Rosemary in her clothes? I mean, in the beginning she was just a modern woman and after a bit she was like a doll, a a, a child? Well, because the more she was put in jeopardy, the more I wanted you to feel that she was fragile, that she could break at any minute, and that she was, should be protected like, a, like you protect a little child. All right, thank you. Okay. Ευχαριστούμε τη κυρία Άνθια Σίλμπερτ που ήταν εδώ μαζί μας. Thank you. Yes. I want to thank everybody who came and for being so wonderful. Thank you. Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ.